This is the plaintiff, Sean Tomberlin. He says he was walking his dog one day, and the defendant's dog nipped at him, bit his finger, and took out a chunk of his knuckle. The defendant's aggressive dog's a menace to the neighborhood, who bit someone else after he bit him. And this defendant needs to be taught a lesson, so he's suing for $4,545.38 for medical bills and pain and suffering. This is the defendant, Andrew Burt. He says the plaintiff fails to state his dog was not on a leash at first, and that's what started the scuffle. In fact, the dog that bit the plaintiff was the plaintiff's own dog, and the opportunist is looking to cash in at his expense by suing him here today, because he refuses to reason with an unreasonable person who is lying. He's accused of a doggy dilemma. All parties, please raise your right hand. What you are about to witness is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with a case pending in civil court. Both parties have agreed to drop their claims and have their cases settled here before Judge Marilyn Millian in our forum, the People's Court. Be seated, come to order, please. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. Sean Tomberlin, you are suing Andrew Burt and Angel Merriman. You have power of attorney for That's Angel. Me. For $4,545.38 in medical bills and pain and suffering that you believe they should pay you because their dog bit you. Tell me what happened. Uh, thank you. So on March 19th, I was walking my dog late at night. Uh, we were, he was off a leash. Uh, as we came down the street, I noticed Mr. Burt and Angel with their two dogs on the side of the road. Your dog's not supposed to be off the leash, No, ma'am, he's not. Why do you do that off the leash then? Uh, I shouldn't have done it, and I don't do it anymore. Yeah, but, but usually there's a reason, like were you just coming out, just going back, or what? what we're, was it? we're on our street late at night. There's rarely anybody out. But you had the leash in your hand? Leash in my hand, yeah. So as soon as I that's saw a, that, him, That's the part that I don't see. Okay. I have the leash in my hand. I'm there. I'm leaning over, but I just don't hook. Okay. <laughs> no, so as soon as I saw him, I called him back. Uh, listens very, very well. Immediately came what back to my What kind of dog? Side. He's a golden doodle. Okay. And a smaller one. He only weighs about 40 pounds. Mm -hmm. uh, so he immediately came back put him on his leash, and then and crossed him. I would say there's probably 50 yards between us while okay. this is going on. Um, as we crossed in the street, they were on one side, I was on the other. Uh, their dog, the larger dog, uh, Gator, became pretty excited. What kind of dog? Black Lab. Okay. Um, became pretty excited. I didn't want to instigate him anymore, so I stopped on the side of the road and just said, is he friendly? And they said yes. Uh, so I waited. My dog was on my right side at this point, and they're on the far left of me. Um, Gator was pulling pretty hard. He's a pretty big lab. Um, and Angel was walking him. So he, she was kind of getting drug along behind him. Uh, by the time they came face to face, Gator became aggressive. Well, how did they come face to face? They were on the other side of the road. So I, as to not instigate and just let the dogs meet, I waited for her to come over. She was oh, having so you guys were, all, were gonna have your dogs sniff each other? Absolutely, absolutely. And I asked if he was friendly, they said yes. So I waited. I led Cooper around from the right side of me. Um, as soon as they got close, Gator became aggressive towards the dog. I tried to pull Cooper away with a leash. My hand got in the way and Gator got my hand. How did your hand get in the way of the two dogs? So Gator and Cooper were coming this way in front of me. Right. When Gator went after Cooper, I yanked Cooper back this way. Right, but your hand's way up here. So how does it get to where it can get bit? That's he, why I don't get it. He got my left hand. So Cooper was on my right side, leash in my right hand. So at least there's nothing to do with it. Where, how did your left hand then get between the- Just, just a simple motion. As I pulled back, my hand was there and it got in the way. Okay. So you got bit. Do you have pictures? Uh, yes, ma'am. And you ended up having to go to the hospital, and what happened? I did. So I went to the hospital. They, um, they gave me two x-rays because of the swelling and the punctures. They were, the, the bite lined up on my finger. So it wasn't just a nip. It lined up on my finger. Uh, the what does lined up on your finger mean? His jaw came down this way. How do you know which dog bit you? Because my dog was on my right side being pulled back by the leash. Mm -hmm. This dog was coming at me this way. There, there just really wasn't an opportunity for my dog to even bite me. I, I would also say my dog's never bit or snapped at anybody's whole life. So you were there. What do you say happened? The, most of that story is, is accurate. However, um, when the dogs did approach, do you have a copy of Angel's statement? Yes, I did. But I want okay. you to talk first. And she says, you know, that Did we you asked, not see it? I was behind her. So you didn't see it? Not, not completely. So no. why are you here instead of Angel? They're my dogs. <laughs> it's like a whole Inspector Clouseau you know, thing. 
you know. They're not my, is your dog friendly? <laughs> yeah. um, okay. Except for you didn't see it. So yeah. go ahead and hand Angel me. Angel says that in the conversation, the both dogs started snipping at each other. And instead of pulling away, he got between them to break it up. And that's when he got Did bit. you see that part? Yes. What's it take to get your attention? No, all right, no, so that, tell me yeah. about that part. And then we, you know, asked if he was all right. We're both nurses. We offered to uh, give him aid, and he said no. No, but I'm did okay. you see the part where he gets between the two dogs? Is yes, ma'am. Okay, tell me about that. He was reaching down to separate the two dogs. With his hand. Yep. Which is really foolhardy. Well, but let me yep. just ask you a question. At the point. Uh, what are you doing? I'm trying to find the pictures, unfortunately. You I don't better be, because if you're just texting somebody in the middle of trial, so huh? <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be swallowing that phone. <laughs> what no, that's right. what were you looking again. for? Pictures of what? The finger? The finger. Yes, the... please. I'd like to see it. Go ahead. Take okay. your time. Thank you. Welcome back to the People's Court. Harvey Levin here. We are in front of the TMZ Celebrity Tour Bus with these fine folks. <laughs> how much fun they're having here. Uh, so here's the question. So when two dog owners let their dogs come face to face and they sniff each other, and then one dog attacks the other, is the dog uh, owner of the one that bit the other responsible for the medical bills? You're screaming no, who's screaming no? You gotta come way up here. Dog owners, they don't know what their dogs are gonna do, and so no one is at fault. No one's at fault, everybody agree with that? No, I think 50% oh. I think that the other dog owner should pay, because both dog owners allow their dogs You're to going 50-50, anybody think 100% they should pay? Yes, I do. That's what dog training is for, invest in it. Oh, okay, okay, three different views. Put a muzzle on, you talking to me? <laughs> going inside the courtroom. Did you end up having to get stitches? They wouldn't stitch because of a dog bite, they wanted to heal open. So I got a real long soak in betadine, like iodine stuff, to clean it out, uh, and then no stitches, just a good wrap for about two weeks. Did you know whether or not they're, you, did you get the injection or no? Uh, I previously had a tetanus shot. Right. Uh, I asked Mr. Burt right away, you know, has your dog had his vaccinations? He said yes. Um, and then I followed up with him the next day or maybe two days later, just saying, I really need to see those shot records to be comfortable with it. Uh, you know, I really felt like his dog wasn't being aggressive towards me, just towards my dog. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Boy, what did it do to your nail? Uh, the fingernail actually never f totally fell off, but it split it pretty wide open. Has it grown out? Uh, yes, ma'am. Wow, that looks like it hurt. Here's the thing, okay? At, at some point, you send him a letter. Do you have that letter? Yes, ma'am. Let me see that. Who do you think bit him? Which dog? Angel tells me that it, it was his dog. Yeah, but Again, Angel, I was behind and I didn't. If Angel tells you that. Why is it that you write a letter, because according to him, and I'm going to see it now if it's true, that you write a letter saying you're so sorry for what happened? Well, I was. I'm sorry you got hurt. Yeah, is that what you say? or Let's see what you say. I assure you that Gator is healthy. Both of these labs think they are humans. They <laughs> sleep inside with me every night. They are not provided the opportunity for any such exposure that you may fear. I assure you rabies should not be a concern. That doesn't sound like somebody who's sorry he got bit by his dogs. This whole, like, you got bit by my dog is all big, and this kind of annoys me because it's a big fabrication now just to not have to pay. And I hate that because that's like lying under oath. And I guess you feel like you're not lying because you're not saying anything about how it happened, but then you're presenting me with an affidavit that I think is a bold-faced lie because if, in fact, she had told you that night he got bit by his own dog, you would not be writing this letter. Now, do you have any evidence of Gator biting anybody else before this occurred? Uh, no, not before this occurred. Do you have any evidence of biting but after? So I, I didn't bring any evidence with me. Unfortunately, Gator's been put down because of biting two more residents Is that uh, accurate? earlier this, this year. This was after the fact, yep. Oh, for goodness sake. How did the bites occur? They I was out of town at the time. The, How did uh, the dog get out? They busted the, I, through the fence. Who was taking care of the dogs in your absence? A friend of my son's. Are the other people who got bit suing you too? No, ma'am. Did you pay for their medicals? They were, I talked to them and that wasn't an issue. Do you have, you have your medical bills, correct? Yes, ma'am. Ma let me see your medical bills. You literally walked in and out, the bill was 2,245? Yes, ma'am. While you're looking for that, 2,300 of what you're suing for is pain and suffering. Tell me about that. Uh, for about six weeks, I couldn't use my left hand for anything. So that Are you right-handed or left-handed? I'm right-handed. Okay. Um, but it also meant things like not being able to go visit my parents out of town that week because I, I wasn't traveling on pain medication. Uh, it meant not being able to participate in any of the physical activities I do, golf, softball, tennis, any of that stuff. Okay. So 
so you're pain and suffering because you weren't able to play golf. You're speaking to a <laughs> golf rough. widow. Pretty you're rough. speaking to a golf <laughs> widow. So yeah, yeah, I am not a sympathetic ear on that. Sure. And you're but and you I, clearly had no use of your left hand. You say for a, for six weeks. For almost six weeks. Okay. okay. So discomfort. So not only stiffness in the finger, but soreness right. under a fingernail. Trying to wait for that to grow back is extremely uncomfortable. Uh, I, I've also spent you know, six months trying to chase him down and work with him to get him to pay for the bills he's responsible for. What has he said to you during all those times? Uh, he expected to have a tax return soon. And I told him that that was fine and that I was comfortable working on a payment plan, that communication between the two of us would just be important. And then what changed? What I changed? Don't, I don't think that I need to pay for, for you know, him putting his hand between two dogs that are trying to, to fight with each other. I didn't, I just- Hey, just you know, don't. listen, he's trying to pull his dog away and, you know, this stuff all happens in a split second. I mean, he didn't, you know, see a charging dog and go, here, take that. Here, I'm going to put that right in between your jaws. Right. Here, here, take it, take it, take it, right here. He didn't do that. You know, he's trying to pull the dogs away. It's not the smartest idea. But, you know, no one's thinking at that moment. No one's thinking, oh, let me give him my butt to, to bite and not my finger. There would be a bite elsewhere if there's any, any, you know, he's trying to protect his dog. Look, under Florida law, here's how it works. And not every state is the same. But here's how Florida law works. If your dog bites and causes injury and you're in a public place, you need to pay for the dog's injuries, period. Okay? The only defenses to that are several things that have nothing to do with our facts or one defense that might have something to do with our facts, which is negligence on his part reduces his recovery by that much. It's one thing to look at somebody and say, well, you're a dumb dumb. You shouldn't, you know, your hand shouldn't be able to. But it's quite another to call it negligent. I mean, negligence is really, that's like a, that's a big deal. I think it's crazy for dog owners to bring their dogs to sniff each other, but it's another thing to call it negligence. Negligence is a big deal. And I don't know that, you know, a guy who's trying to separate two dogs and his finger gets bit, I'm going to freeze it in time and somehow figure that there was a different way for him to do it so it's all his fault. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make him eat some of his medical bills. No, I'm not. So um, I am going to order the defendant to pay the plaintiff $2,245.38 in medical bills and $1,000 in pain and suffering for a sum total judgment in favor of the plaintiff in the amount of $3,245. That's my judgment. Good luck, folks. Thank you. All right, so this is what the defendant has to say coming out uh, in the hallway here. This case is over, and you come out on the losing end here. Yep, um, I'm glad it's over. It's unfortunate, you know. I, it's a shame he got hurt. Okay, I don't think that I should pay for him sticking between two dogs, but sticking his hand in there to break his it up. Sticking his hand in there, yeah, you know. Well, there's well, other ways to do it. Just snatch him away. You know? So that's your big defense that he broke up the well, fight the wrong I'm, way. I'm not a lawyer. I don't. So I just didn't think that that. All right, okay. All that all right, follow up, Sir McIntosh. Okay. All right, step on in here. Um, all right, how's the finger and has has everything else? Finger's better now, but uh, appreciate the judge taking into consideration, and, and I'm glad it worked out for me. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what, what are you sticking your finger in between two fighting dogs for? What's you know, the matter with it, you? It wasn't an ejected hand in there. It just happened to get in the way as the two of them were scuffling. You're you going to kick them next time, right? I'll do my best to kick a dog. I don't, I don't know think that's, that's a right. good idea. Yeah. <laughs> Harvey? Okay, FYI, in some states, Kurt, uh, when a dog bites a person, there is automatic liability.